Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Kagan Dunlap channel. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's pretty crazy. What the hell is going on in Aurora, Colorado? I've been reading a bunch of news about apartment complexes being taken over by Venezuelan gangs. I've even seen video coming out about it. It's been all over the place, it's been all over social media, all over the news. There's a bunch of misinformation, disinformation too, naturally with any large headline, but there's been a lot of substantiation with it as well. Like the, the surveillance footage that I saw was taken on August 18th in which multiple armed men reportedly belonging to a violent Venezuelan gang, Trend de Arag, Trendera Aragua broke into apartment units and forced the tenants out. Residents could hear gunshots during the armed takeover, and then there's been videos of the gang's illegal activities surfacing this week, bringing national media attention to the Denver suburb and prompting local officials to respond. Now, there's been no confirmation that that specific gang has been the one that's involved, but they have confirmed that it is definitely Venezuelan migrants that have taken over these complexes. If it is that gang specifically, they are believed to have been behind tons of different things like kidnapping, extortion, and trafficking, illicit substances, all kinds of other stuff, not good stuff. Apparently there's three separate apartment complexes in Aurora that have been terrorized by armed men. You know, people aren't really sure about what their purpose or motive is behind it. It's been happening. The current governor, Jared Polis, or Polis, is like a pretty left leaning guy. I mean, obviously he's a registered Democrat, so you can take that for what you will. He has apparently been dismissing, saying, oh, don't worry, it's not happening. He called it imagination. It's imagination. It's a story. It's made up. It's not real. Other sources have said that the governor has already let the mayor of Aurora know that the state is ready to support with local police departments and state troopers and the Colorado Bureau of Investigation if it's needed. Now, in my head, if you've got like armed groups of people kicking tenants out of their apartment in your city, maybe you need to call the National Guard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if like you could just get a local law enforcement team in there because these dudes are rolling up with like full auto weapons, like AKs and stuff like that. Like, okay, yeah, you got like tactical teams that could go in, but if they took over an entire apartment complex, like maybe you need to send in like the National Guard and like secure your city again. Anytime people talk about like, Colorado being a sanctuary state, they refer to the specific bill HB 19 TAC 1124. Prime sponsors for that were Representative Adrian Benavides, Representative Susan Lontine, Senator Mike Foote, and Senator Julie Gonzalez. And a lot of people are blaming the current governor because he allowed this kind of stuff to stay in place. This bill says, protect Colorado residents from federal government overreach. Okay, sure. Concerning clarification of the authority of criminal justice officials with respect to the enforcement of certain federal civil laws. Subject, immigration. Federal immigration enforcement. No arrest based on civil detainer. No personal information to immigration authorities from probation. Advisement before immigration interview. This act allows a law enforcement officer or employee to cooperate or assist federal immigration enforcement authorities in the execution of a warrant issued by a federal judge or magistrate or honoring any writ issued by any state or federal judge concerning the transfer of a prisoner to or from federal custody. The act prohibits a law enforcement officer from arresting or detaining an individual solely on the basis of a civil immigration detainer. The act prohibits a probation officer or probation department employee from providing an individual's personal information to federal immigration authorities. If a law enforcement officer is coordinating a telephone or video interview between federal immigration authorities and an individual in jail or another custodial facility, the individual must be advised that the interview is being sought by federal immigration authorities. The individual has the right to decline the interview and remain silent. The individual has the right to speak to an attorney before submitting to the interview. And anything the individual says may be used against him or her in subsequent proceedings, including a federal immigration court. So the Aurora mayor, Mike Kaufman, said on Thursday of this past week that Venezuelan gangs have taken control of a bunch of apartment complexes. And he also admitted that the city lost control of the gang infiltration. He said they're working aggressively to, to combat it. But he also pushed back on the national media's recent portrayal of an entire city being overrun by gangs because that's obviously a little excessive. That's not the, that's not the case. He said that it's been a misrepresentation of Aurora. But he also said that arrests have been made and more are going to be continued to get made. So officials noted that the city and the Aurora Police Department have established a special task force in collaboration with other local, state, and federal partners to specifically address concerns about Venezuelan gangs' activity 
and other criminal activity affecting migrant communities. They said that we are grateful that the Drug Enforcement Administration, a valuable federal partner, has acknowledged its ongoing work into TDA across the metro and appreciate additional resources it provides to combat this issue. There's been increasingly collecting evidence to show that the gang is connected to crimes in the area. The mayor said it's no coincidence that the three Aurora apartment complexes that have had major problems are owned by the same company, CBZ Management. The management that ran the buildings disappeared when the violence started happening there, according to residents who spoke with the Denver Gazette. All of the residents who spoke were Venezuelan migrants, although nationals from Colombia, Guatemala, and some African nations also inhabited the Edge at Lowry at 12th and Dallas, Aspen Grove at Colfax and Nome, and Whispering Pines at 1357 Galena. Now, the three apartment buildings have been in the news constantly ever since the, the, you know, the media posts have been coming out about it. Video evidence of people being pulled from their homes to uninhabitable situations due to squatters, drugs, plumbing leaks, mountains of trash, and rodents all over the place. There was actually a shooting on August 18th out there that caused one person to become critically injured. Now, CBZ management owns 11 different properties in Denver, Aurora, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo, and they've been claiming that there's been a growing presence of gang violence at its Aspen Grove apartment, which has prevented the company from caring for that area. They said, we would like to be able to resume normal operations at our buildings, but we can't do that under threat of present and immediate danger against residents, staff, and management. Anyway, bottom line is that obviously law enforcement is going to have to get involved. It sounds to me like the mayor of Aurora has already been putting together resources to get police involvement and getting law enforcement agents out there to clean the whole area up. It's going to take time and it's not going to happen overnight. Fortunately, it's only three apartment complexes, so that's like manageable. If for some reason it continues to get out of hand, maybe they ought to consider bringing the National Guard in and just fixing it. Just fix the problem, fix it right now, and and be done with it. You can't have a functioning city if you've got criminal organizations from other countries taking over apartment complexes. Like You just can't. Hopefully they can figure it out. Uh, If you live in Colorado and you know anything else about this, you've seen some of this stuff or you've like driven past it or know anything, let us know in the comments. Or if you've been visiting Colorado recently and you've heard or seen anything about this, let us know in the comments as well. And hopefully they can figure this out because this is insane and definitely not sustainable. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something like I did and we'll see you in the next video.